Hey everyone, this weekend we're spending a good amount of time in New Hampshire and right now we're on that road with the Thirsty Tree Culvert. A, a, a lot of you probably know what I'm talking about. They didn't start construction yet, but if you saw my video, this entire road, the DOT in New Hampshire is going to repave it, replace almost every pipe and a good amount of pipes. They also wrote just okay on the road above them. They marked all the potholes. So this road, I don't know when, but at some point this year, it's supposedly going to be completely redone after reporting a bunch of issues. But unfortunately, they're going to be doing... They're not upgrading the pipes big enough in a lot of spots, I feel. But I think they're doing it because of the condition of the road also. But right now, I want to show you the off-road lights I just put on this thing. They were $600 lights, but the dealer ended up giving them to me for free because they promised that them being on the grill of the truck wouldn't interfere with any of the safety sensors, but it did. So the dealer said, um, if you want, I can take them off, or if you want, I can just refund you 100% and you can bring it somewhere else to have it put on a different way. They refunded me 100%, I brought it home, and I was able to fix it myself. Anyways, so right now, this is high beams, this is low beams, this is fog lights with low beams, fog lights off. For some reason, it won't let me keep the fog lights on with the high beams. It makes sense if there's fog, you want low beams, but I feel like for extra light, it should let me. The vehicle does not. Um, high beam back on. Here's the low beam off-road light, and check out the high beam off-road light. Can't believe it, it's like daylight. This is gonna be so awesome for the summer filming and moose watching, and just plain working on the dirt roads at night. This is so bright, I'll be able to light it up like daytime for nighttime videos. So this light I'm using now is illegal on-road. We're on a recreational road. This is a recreational road in New Hampshire they're gonna be fixing. It looks like daylight, it's so bright. It's awesome. You see they even, they have like things marked in the road, that rock right there is. So, when they put it on, they had it tilted down. I have it tilted up a lot. So now it shines the road, it shines the treetops. Everything is lit up. We shut the actual headlights off. Look at the difference it makes. Headlights are completely off, back on. Combined, it's just awesome for nighttime filming. This will be really good on the dirt roads. The dirt roads, you're allowed to use off-road lights, but you're supposed to treat them like a high beam. But if I'm stationary in the middle of the night, there's a high chance not a single person will go by in the first place. And if one does go by, and they see it working, I don't think there'll be a problem. Especially since I became a third party that works with one of the logging companies. Yeah, that, that owner of the logging company is such a friendly guy and he loves the things I was doing out there and I can just keep on doing them. Now, as far as public roads, like draining streets or whatever it may be in the middle of the night, this would be illegal, except two towns which I got permission in writing to actually use the strobe lights. I don't think I'm gonna put strobe lights on this vehicle because we, we're we rarely doing that stuff anymore. There's no more street floods, they don't occur anymore since they stepped up maintenance, and they're so rare it's not financially feasible going to look for them anymore. Because that takes a lot of time, a lot of money to drive around during those storms. It's not feasible anymore to do those. So if we happen upon one, it'll happen. If not, it doesn't. Can't wait to, to go moose watching. We are in northern New Hampshire. We, it could happen tonight on this road. So low beam height. That's the low beam on the off-road light really doesn't make a difference you see it's like doing nothing let's see what the low beam does if I shut all the lights off you can't even see it on camera it's so low can you see yeah it doesn't do really anything the low beam I guess it's like for show 
I, I don't think a cop would pull pull you over for having the low beam off road light. You know, I see people driving with them all the time, even on the public roads, especially the tractor trailers. I see them on the highway at night with their off road lights because it just shines so far down the road. It shines to the sides. It's good for at night because you can see a deer approaching and it gives you more time to react. That's the reason why I wanted the safety sensor working at the moment. But at some point, I do have a welder that's going to take the truck for a few weeks to do a couple things. He's going to put the second gas tank on the vehicle. Any vehicle that has a full-size spare tire underneath the back, if it's an SUV or a pickup truck, you can remove the tire and get an auxiliary fuel tank, which will... It has a transfer pump, so when your tank is empty, you hit that pump button, and it pumps your original tank full again, which will be good, because I'll never have to use gas cans again. I'm so tired of that. That's why I've been kind of avoiding deep off-road wilderness in the past two weeks having the truck. But that should be done in the next two weeks. Then we'll go take a deep woods trip for a while. And that welder's also going to put brackets on the front of the truck, the same kind of brackets a snow plow has. I would never be plowing with a V6. I don't think it's a good idea. Maybe my own personal driveway, but I don't think it's a good idea for the transmission. When you're plowing, you usually want a truck with a V8, usually something bigger than the base model, like a 1500 or... Uh, F-150, you don't want that. You want something that's 2,500 or bigger usually because they got the beefed up transmission to be moving a lot of weight because snow banks are very heavy. But that's not why I'm doing it. The guy's putting those brackets on that because I want to have a removable push bar that goes on the same way as a snow plow for those, er for those areas we go in in Maine, deep in the woods, and if we ever go on a western trip, everyone out west had a push bar. I couldn't believe it. More than 90% of the vehicles because it's the deer and farm animals everywhere. Toyota does not make a push bar. They make a brush bar, which is for driving through bushes. It would not protect during a hard hit of a deer or another vehicle like a push bar would. But it will be removable because I'm not going to have it on all the time. I don't want it on all the time when I'm just driving around my area. Because my area, deer are so rare, I'm not going to leave it on. Because with that thing on, none of the sensors, none of that stuff works. Or that's what I was told by the welder. None of it should work because it will be blocking it. So that's just to try to make the vehicle be drivable after an animal hit in the middle of nowhere. But this vehicle, I, I have a CB radio and I also have, it has a, I don't know what Toyota calls it, it's like the equivalent of OnStar, but it's a satellite phone that's free for the life of the vehicle. It doesn't have a subscription or anything. I'm not paying for anything like satellite radio. I didn't even use it during a free trial. Don't want to get used to it because I'm not paying for it. But it's supposedly it has a satellite phone that will call emergency only in here. I've pushed it before. I'll push it now to show you what it does. Connecting to the emergency call center. To cancel, please press the button again. Push emergency again. call canceled. I, and I don't know what exactly would happen if I left it on. I don't. I imagine it would connect me with someone, hopefully a live person, or maybe it just puts out a distress call for someone who shows up, I don't know. But also supposedly, if airbags are deployed, it automatically calls anyway. That can be shut off. The GPS on the vehicle can be shut off, which I think is kind of creepy how it follows you and it tells you out loud when you go over state lines and kind of scares you. I'm thinking about shutting it off, and if I ever needed to use it, you can just turn it right back on. But I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I don't know how to disable it. There's a sticker on the ceiling that tells me how to go through it, but those instructions are not helping at all. I'll just have the dealer do it, maybe. Oh, no, it says right in the sticker that I have to do it. It literally says that. No one else can do it for me. But I thought a push bar would be a good idea for the animals and stuff. Because I, I went in a place in Maine a, a while back. There was just so many deer. And then you don't have to worry driving fast in the middle of the night. 
if a deer runs out, and it would probably would be a deer. Moose are slow walkers. Usually it would already be in the road when it gets hit. They rarely run in front of people, but it's the deer. They're jumpy, and just you driving by, a lot of times they purposely run out in front of you zigzagging because they think you're a predator and they're trying to confuse you, but oftentimes they will race you and just try to zigzag fast in front of you, assuming you as a predator can't turn around that fast. And that's how they end up getting hit. The deer hit rate in America is very high. I think the, the lowest hit rate is like a 1 in 50 chance. No, I'm something, it, it's, it's very high. It's 1 in 50 chance in a year that you'll hit a deer. In some places, I think West Virginia may have been the highest. It was like a 1 in 30 something chance that you'll hit a deer in a year. I've never had a close hit. I've, you know, not that close, but I've encountered deer. So I thought that was going to be a good idea to put on. That's why I had my old car for such a long time. I wanted to make sure I had the right amount of money to finance the truck and put everything on I wanted exactly so it would be ready for these types of trips. Long distance travel I'm set up for. And this is a very terrible road. This is one of the worst paved roads I've ever seen. But New Hampshire didn't take care of it very well because it's not a main artery. I actually find it fun with all these bumps and stuff. I just reported to them the culvert pipes. But I don't know if you can see. Let me show you the next pipe. Can you see all the orange writing in the road? Every single pipe it says, most of them it says 15 inch pipe, install 18 inch pipe. That's not a big upgrade, especially... If, I think the one we just drove over may have been the Thirsty Tree Culvert. Both of those pipes there combined during storms can't nearly handle it. Three more inches is not going to do anything. Each one of those there should be like three feet. And they're not going to... It's just going to keep happening if they follow those plans. I don't know who they had coming out here determining what size they needed, but the, whoever did that has no knowledge at all. They should have noticed the debris all over the edge of the road showing the amount of velocity and water going across that thing. And their mistake is going to cause problems forever until it's corrected. Off. That makes a huge difference for nighttime filming. And compared to my old vehicle, the headlights on this are way better also because they're LED and they're like daylight. I remember when I had the guy put a two inch lift kit on it. It's not, it doesn't look like much, you can barely tell, but I could feel it when I got in. And I also, that really helped. Just earlier today, I drove through a river because the bridge was out. There was enough of an area in the drainage ditch, drove right down into the river and right back up the other side. Couldn't believe it didn't bottom out at all. The old car never could have even got down in the drainage ditch. That'll be in an upcoming video sometime. Driving right down the river because the bridge just a big sinkhole opened up on the ed end of it. And I drove over that sinkhole multiple times in the leading weeks going up to that. I, I could have went through that. Some truck probably made it through that and caused that. And it's because the foundation logging bridges don't have foundations they're up on concrete blocks usually and they can easily erode during high water that's why during the spring thaw if you're the first vehicle and you see a bridge that's even slightly crooked you got to get out and look underneath it it could be dangerous you could fall into something mm. anyways what was i gonna say about that subject i had something to say about it oh yeah about the headlights. The first day I got this thing back after the dealer put the two inch lift on it. Two inch lift doesn't seem like a lot, right? But my low beams were like high beams at night and I could not control it. Everyone going by me was flashing me. So immediately I went to the dealer and they had, they, they fixed the beams. And now we're fine. Because when you lift a vehicle, even slightly, you have to readjust your beams. I didn't do it myself. First off, I didn't have the tool. There's like this little hole with gears down in there. It doesn't look like a screwdriver or anything could have done it. I tried using a star screwdriver. It looked like that may have been able to turn it. 
No, it did not work. So brought it to the, the dealer. I don't think I would have got it perfect anyways. I don't know exactly how they're supposed to be. After that night, no one else flashed me for having too bright of lights. I'm wondering if other people aren't adjusting their lights when they do these slight lifts. Because a lot of people where I live, most people have slight lifts up here in the northern New England area. Just because of the snow and rough terrain on these roads. And a lot of people blind me at night. I always thought it was just the newer LED lights, but maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. I love how I can see the treetops even in the distance with this light. This thing's awesome. It's way better than the off-road light if you saw my old car. That was a plug-in one. goes into the cigarette lighter. I would only run it for 10 minutes at a time and let it cool down because the plug would get so hot. I was afraid it was going to blow a fuse because it was almost the limit of that fuse box. And that thing wasn't nearly as bright as this. But that was only a $100 off-road light. This is a $600 one. And this is not even close to the biggest you can get. This thing's only like two feet wide. They have ones that are as wide as the vehicle with, and there's st you can stack them. But I don't need anything else, this is awesome. You can see way down in front of me at night. You can see way off to the sides. They work as ditch lights. Like, for example, if there was a flood at this next culvert we're about to go over, I can just park back here in the road and look, it lights up the entrance and the exit of the pipe pretty well for working but I, I don't know how well that would work I'd probably just point it at one or leave another camera in the vehicle if the road was flooded and show that slowly reducing that the dealer gave me these lights for free that was awesome because they promised that it wouldn't mess with the sensors then it did I, I didn't even ask for that they just uh, offered pretty fast to just refund it because they didn't want to deal with it just needed a little adjustment although I don't really care that much about the safety sensors I've never had a vehicle with them before although I think it's very handy because if a deer jumps out in front of you the computer's gonna react way faster than you with those automatic brakes. And the same thing in Massachusetts when a mass hole pulls out in front of you. It happens, it never fails. I almost get into a crash every time I visit Massachusetts. It never fails. Those drivers are in such a rush. They're some of the worst drivers in the country. They are the worst in my opinion. And I've been to California cities, Portland, Vegas, they're packed with people, but at least they have patience and they're not a-holes. At least not compared to Massachusetts drivers, in my opinion. But, uh, pretty soon there'll be a push bar for anyone that does that kind of stuff. You hear that little dink? My clearance is 10-8, cause I have the big CB antenna on the roof just went dink against the top of the tree. All right, and here's the end of this old rough road. We'll come back to the area in maybe a month or so and see if they did anything. I probably won't make another video until they do something. I'll just come check on it myself. But we're gonna end this video about bragging about the new off-road light. We're now approaching a road, so I have to legally shut it off. Although, I don't know about Northern New Hampshire, but Northern Maine, a lot of those roads, the cops just don't care as long as you treat it like a high beam. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great night.